pain. So much pain. Tears rolled down her face with the pain in her hip. Did I sleep weirdly? She tried to move, but pain shot down her leg like lightning radiating from her hip. Ruth? She called out, hoping the wraith would hear her. Miss Erin? She said as she appeared. Erin was so happy to see her. What's wrong? It's my hip. It's in so much pain and I don't know what to do. I tried getting up, but it was a huge mistake. The pain caused her to whimper aloud. I'll get your uncle. I won't be long. She disappeared, and Aaron was left to wait with her pain. True to her word, it didn't take Ruth long to return with Jacob. I will need to touch you. Aaron nodded. He placed both of his hands around her left hip. It became cold with the healing energy he was pouring into her hip. It took only a few moments, but her relief was visible. I'm going to ease the strain it caused on your back and leg now. She nodded, and she felt his hands move first to her back and then to her leg. Ruth, can you bring Deacon in here? I want to make sure nothing else is wrong. Ruth quickly left to do as he asked. What happened? I think I just slept wrong. He helped her to adjust to a better position so that her spine and hips would be straight. You asked for me, Dad? Yes. Can you check over her left leg for me? My life magic is a little off when it comes to her leg. Sure. Why is it off? That's your strongest area of magic. He wrinkled his nose in confusion. As Jacob began to explain, he checked Aaron's mobility and felt around at the joint to ensure what he is seeing in her. Jacob began to explain the limitations of magic to Aaron. As you know, we can heal anything short of death. For example, if your hand were to be cut off, I could regrow it. It would be painful and drain us both, but it could be done. When we awaken as mages, there is something that changes within us. We become frozen within our bodies to a certain extent. Had I been right there after the accident, while you were still unconscious, due to the danger of you witnessing magic while not being awakened yourself, I could have fixed everything. You would have both of your eyes and full use of your arm and leg. I could have made it as if you had never been in an accident. But our journey through our path creates a memory of our bodies. You may have noticed that your arm and leg improved over the course of your journey. Aaron nodded confirmation. Your arm and leg as they were right before you signed your name in the book is the most your leg can be healed, but that healing has to be initiated by muscle growth. At this point, if we cut your leg off at the hip, not only would you potentially die simply from the stress and blood loss, but you could also only be healed as much as you are now. If, however, regular doctors come up with something better for you, then you could become better. Potentially. He shrugged. There is no guarantee with this. This is why I am having Deacon help you with this. I may be strong in life magic, but your leg's condition is beyond what I can help you with. Right now, it is regular mundane medicine that can do you the most good. We will do what we can to keep the inflammation low so that you can build the necessary muscle you need. Deacon? I think her hip got locked up once it became inflamed throughout the night. Once you calmed the inflammation, her hip was able to unlock. We can work with this, Aaron. Do you think you're ready to stand? She nodded, so he helped her to stand and take a few steps. Good, good. Do you think you can get ready and then come down to breakfast, or do you want me to wait, or get one of the staff to help you, or even Susanna? I think I can do it myself. Can you just help me to sit on the bed again? Of course. How about we ask Ruth to stay with you just in case? She nodded, and he smiled. Ruth? Of course. Miss Erin, I will only help you as much as you need or ask, I promise. Thank you, everyone. She smiled weakly. Jacob gave her knee a quick pat before standing up and leaving with Deacon. True to her word, Ruth only helped Aaron as much as she needed her to. As Aaron was getting dressed, she finally asked a question that bothered her. Ruth, why do you call me Miss? But you call Uncle Jacob and Deacon by name. I have known them both for quite some time. 
I don't know you well enough to just call you by name. I will eventually as I get to know you. She smiled, and Aaron nodded in understanding. Ruth walked with her down to the kitchen and left after Aaron sat down. After breakfast, Deacon had her come outside to the former pool house. It had been converted to a workout room because his dad couldn't stand the stench of boy sweat in the house. They started up the physical therapy and would continue to do sessions at least three times a week. After lunch was finished, the moving truck arrived. As was custom in the house, when non-mages came to the house, the staff did not show themselves. Within a few hours, the truck was completely unloaded, and Aaron's new bedroom was filled with everything, as well as a mountain of boxes. Aaron looked into the mess of a room and sighed. There was no way she was going to be able to move things around. Susanna scoffed. Did you really think we wouldn't help you? At Aaron's confused look, Susanna tapped her own temple. Warlock mind magic, remember? It means I can listen in on thoughts. I saw your face and wanted to know what was wrong. Susanna laughed and rolled her eyes. Besides, it's a great learning opportunity. The five of them stood in the room, and one by one, they taught her ways to use her matter magic with Susanna's space magic to move things around the room to decorate or organize. The items that were bought the previous day had also been brought up with the stuff from the moving van so that the area rugs could be placed down before moving things into place. By the time the larger items had been placed and many of the box's contents had been removed and organized, it really began to look like two separate areas, a bedroom and an office, workspace. Dinner would be starting soon, but Jacob wanted to show Aaron something. He led her to the library and then to a secret lever at the back of the visible library. When he pulled the lever in the form of a book, the wall slid open like in a Scooby-Doo cartoon. There was a short hallway behind the hidden door that led to another room. This room had a collection of odd items. On one of the shelves, she recognized the items her parents had said were their anchors. When Jacob saw she had noticed the items from her parents, he explained, This is where we store anchors. This is to protect them from becoming damaged. You are always welcome to take anything of your parents out to call to them if you need to. But for the rest, I would appreciate if you asked. They belong to people you never knew, so it would be a little rude to just call them up. To have an anchor brought into this house invites that wraith in. So should you encounter an anchor to another wraith, please do not bring it on the property until we know its intentions. Thank you for letting me know. I didn't see the box and just thought I had misplaced it. Is there a way to make sure an item doesn't belong to an unknown wraith? Yes. I brought you here to show you. I want you to pick up that old doctor satchel if you can. He pointed to it. It should be fairly light. She went over and carefully picked it up. Okay. Close your eyes and try to picture the item in your mind's eye. She nodded. Do you see anything? A black glow. Good. The glow tells you that it is an anchor. I want you to concentrate on the glow now. Do you notice anything? It's like little lines that come out. Good. Follow the lines with your mind. Tell me what you see. A man? He is about your height. You share the same eyes. He is wearing a doctor's outfit, but it's old, like from the mid-1800s. Good. You have just indirectly met your great-great-great-grandfather. He was a doctor, and he was also a shaman like me. His cures were ahead of their time. People came from all over the country to see him. The attention eventually made him withdraw from society because he didn't want to expose mages to the non-magical community. He did still see patients, but only children, and only some of the worst cases. We don't see him around much, except when someone becomes ill. I wanted to let you know in case he chooses to make himself known to you. The damages you received before awakening as a mage may interest him, and he may want to try and help you. What's his name? Jacob Blackwell, the first. At her confused look, he smiled. I am Jacob Blackwell, the fourth. I am the only one who has not named any of my children Jacob. When they were finished, he showed her how to seal the room back up and walked with her down to dinner.
The following two months were spent strengthening Aaron's body and teaching her how to use her magic. Jacob Blackwell I did come by and visit her. He showed her a pain-reducing ointment, as well as how to make a pain-reducing pill. The ointment would help with the constant pain, while the pill would be for the extreme pain like she had experienced her second day there. He advised her to keep both of these items on hand for herself. She showed her uncle the recipes their ancestor had gifted her the next day. I don't recognize either of these recipes. Looks like he gave you a pair of his secret recipes. I would keep those relatively secret, especially the outside world. Jacob I is still a well-known name in the mage world, and they may try to get you to get more of his recipes out of him. I'm glad he came to see you, though, and I had hoped he might have some answers to give us to help you better. During this time, she learned that there were indeed both werewolves and vampires in the world, and that demons and angels do exist, though would have to be directly summoned in order to interact with them. There were two high schools in the magical community, one for the east half of the United States and one for the west half. Mages attended them based on where they lived. Werewolves and vampires also attended these schools to help them expand their own gifts. Vampires also learned control while the werewolves utilized this arrangement to also find their mates. There was an issue, however. Vampires and werewolves were more likely to kill each other on sight due to centuries of animosity between the two supernaturals. Therefore, vampires all went to the school on the west side of the country, and werewolves went to the school on the east side of the country. They had tried to integrate them in the beginning, but mages just didn't understand how deep the hatred these two groups had for each other. Jacob also warned Aaron about the werewolves. In general, they despised people with physical deficiencies or deformities. He was worried that they may target her in secret, so he gave her a special cane. She was now able to walk with just a cane, thanks to the physical therapy. Within the special cane was a silver-coated sword. It was indetectable by magic. Aaron had learned that werewolves were very weak to silver, so understood that this was only to be used in emergencies. Use your magic first. You won't be able to use it directly upon a werewolf because they are fairly resistant to magic. But you can affect the matter around them. Always remember that you can control the very stones beneath their feet. You are never powerless. He cautioned. She nodded and traded the hidden sword cane for the basic metal one she had been using. School would start tomorrow, so she had packed the items she wanted to take. The family had let her know she would be in a two-person dorm-style room, and that Jacob had put in a request for a first-floor room for her, for which she was grateful. The next day, the whole family drove to the portal site that would take them to the school. Portal sites were all over the U.S., so they weren't difficult to get to. It had been explained to Aaron that the school was in a pocket dimension that had been created by some of the most powerful mages by utilizing space magic. This would be like a boarding school. She would be able to come home during the holidays and summer vacation. She was sad to be away from the family she had come to know, but knew getting a proper magical education was important too. Everyone except Aaron carried in a box. She rolled a suitcase behind herself instead. As they walked, Colby was explaining the layout as he had been here the most recently. Have you ever been to a college campus? He asked. Yes. We were looking at a few universities before the accident. Riverbrook is set up similarly. He gestured to the three-story building in front of them. This is the boys' dorm. The girls' dorm is just a little further. The werewolves' dorms are set up a little differently. They have smaller buildings about the size of a colonial-style house and are separated by pack. They are all on the opposite side of the campus from here, closer to the forest area. He pointed again. That way is where all the class buildings are. Dad is going. Go and get your information from the administration building so we know which dorm room is yours, as well as your class schedule. We'll get to the girls' dorm and then wait for Dad to come back. Sound good? As they walked, there were many other students milling around with their families. Today was move-in day, 
and tomorrow was when classes would start. Aaron nodded. I hope I have a good roommate. She felt the hair on her arms stand up as she saw Colby make a few gestures and then mumble something under his breath. She could now see magic and how it was woven due to all the training she had over the summer. She had studied and practiced a lot so that she wouldn't have bouts of wild magic at school. She knew that Colby, the enchanter, had just twisted fate in her favor. I don't think that will be a problem. He smirked. Aaron chuckled. I don't think it will be a problem now either. Thank you. The first year is always scary. This is your senior year, so you will only be at this school this year. If you need it or want it, there is also a college. It's good for people like you who awakened later, but not necessary. Dad said that because you were suppressed for 10 years, your power and ability to do more difficult spells is going to grow quickly to catch up. Aaron nodded. In about an hour, there will be a welcome to the school speech. While you and Dad go to that, the rest of us will finish unpacking everything for you. We should be done by the end of the speech, so we'll come and get you and the five of us can show you around. Sounds perfect. She grinned. It wasn't long before Jacob returned with the room key and her schedule of classes. 105, Jacob announced. This is good. It means you won't be walking all the way to the back half of the dorms. He led the kids to the dorm and unlocked the door. The room had two beds, two small bookshelves, two desks, and two desk chairs. There were separate closets for her and her roommate. There was a door here that led to a full bathroom that was shared with the room next door. Okay, which side of the room do you want? Susanna asked. Aaron pointed to the right. This side, I guess. All right. Start by hanging up your clothes and we will work on the rest. Deacon ordered with a smile. Aaron opened the suitcase and pulled out a small, plastic, three-drawer cabinet. It was a good thing that Susanna had used space magic to give this suitcase more space. They weren't able to do it with the boxes because it would make them too heavy, but because the suitcase had wheels, it wasn't difficult to still handle despite added weight. She set this plastic cabinet in the closet. Because there wasn't a dresser, nor the extra room for a dresser, Susanna had thought of this alternative for underwear and socks. As she hung the rest of her clothing up, Susanna made the bed, Jacob filled her bookshelf, and Deacon was setting up a desk lamp and an alarm clock for her. Soon, it was time for Jacob to take Aaron to the welcome speech. It was held outside at a football field and the students were in the stands. Aaron took a seat on the first bench and Jacob stood off to a side with the other parents. He recognized many faces, including William Burles. You have another child, Jacob. He asked with mock astonishment. It was well known that Jacob had children with several women. Jacob laughed at the good-natured ribbing. She's my niece. Do you remember my little brother, Dustin? He's the one that never awakened, right? Yeah, his daughter did, so I've brought her. Your youngest starting this year. Yeah, Annette is there. William pointed. She was a pretty girl with high, hair-sprayed bangs and white blonde hair like her mother, Jessica. My niece Erin is there. Jacob pointed. She was sitting to their left, so he did not see the leg brace. There was commotion towards the top of the stands, and Erin twisted to look up. It was a bunch of boys and girls. There was a sameness to them, a wildness. Most had their hair longer, and they were all well on the way to develop some large muscles. The underlying body strength was there, Aaron could tell from her years of gymnastics, and it would be only a year or two before they were all bursting with muscles. She glanced back over at her uncle, and he was also looking at those kids with a sadness in his eyes. It was gone in a moment. A man stood before them on a small, raised platform and used a microphone to be heard by everyone. He welcomed everyone to the school and gave the normal kind of lists of rules, as well as expectations for the year. It was pleasant enough, but Aaron realized it was the same kind of bullshit her old principal used to spout in Michigan. I guess schools are the same everywhere. When the speech was over, she got up and started heading towards her uncle. 
She didn't even notice the weird stares the other students gave her. They were unused to seeing anyone with any kind of disability. Some kids squeezed past her, but she was careful to keep her balance. After checking her pain level, they walked with her on a mini tour. Jacob showed her the places where she could get food. He gave her a food card and explained that it would allow her to get three meals a day. However, if she wanted other snacks, she would have to pay for them. Use your credit card I gave you. Don't worry about using it. He laughed. I want you to use it. I don't want you to want for anything, especially here. And if you need anything from home, just send me a letter. I can ship you anything. I think she needs a mini fridge, Dad, Colby said. I can arrange that. Jacob grinned. They showed her where her classes would be, and Deacon showed her where the communal weight and exercise room was located. This was a very large space, as big as any Bally Total Fitness, maybe even bigger. Just like a Bally's, they had swimming pools and jacuzzis. Deacon let her know that the jacuzzi may be good for her hip, if it was especially achy. As they walked, she did learn that the will-looking students were werewolves. They weren't what she was expecting, which made everyone else laugh. Well, what did you expect? Susanna asked. I guess I expected them to be more wolf-like. Oh, you're thinking of their half-form, also called their wolf-man form. At her confused look, Colby explained. Werewolves have three forms, human, wolf, and the wolf-man form. They each have their strengths and weaknesses. He shrugged, indicating that was all he really knew about the forms and no one else had any other info to add. They eventually came back to the dorm room where her roommate was just getting in. The students that were returning didn't have to arrive so early, so she was just arriving with her mom. They had also used a space spell on a suitcase and a large plastic bin that had been brought on a radio flyer wagon. Susanna came in to show Aaron where her items were and what to do with dirty clothes as the school took care of laundry for the students. Soon enough, the family left and she was left with her new roommate and her mother. Hi, my name is Amy, Amy Lord. It's nice to meet you. Is it your first year here? My name is Aaron Blackwell. Yeah, I just awakened in June. My uncle and his kids have been getting me up to date as best they can. After Amy's mother left, Aaron and Amy got to know each other. Amy was from Indiana, near Muncie. Her mom was a warlock and she was a shaman, but her dad was not a mage. He wasn't happy that she was going to a boarding school, but she had been coming here for three years now. This would also be her senior year and fourth year. She was excited to show Aaron around, and they even shared two classes together the next day. She asked about Aaron's eye and leg, so Aaron explained. She asked to use her life arcane to sense the injury of her hip, so Aaron agreed. She knew there wasn't anything she could do to harm her by sensing. Whoa, that's trippy, Amy said after checking out her hip. I've never encountered anything like it. It almost feels like a paradox. Does that make sense? Yeah, it was still healing after I awakened, so my uncle, who is a shaman too, finds it to be pretty weird. My cousin has been helping me strengthen everything so that maybe one day I can walk without the brace. He thinks I will probably always need at least a cane. Wow, I can't even imagine. Well, if you need help reducing swelling, let me know. I'd be happy to help. She smiled. Hey, want to meet our bathroom mates? We'll have to figure out shower arrangements between the four of us. When do you prefer to shower? Usually mornings, but I think with the extra time it will take me to get to class in the morning, I should probably request a night slot. Okay, let's go meet them. Amy led her through the bathroom and knocked on the closed door. They could hear some talking, and then the door was opened. The girl that opened the door was tan with an olive complexion and dark brown hair. Her roommate was a black girl with beautiful long hair. The first girl was named Sharon, and the second girl was named Denise. They were both juniors, so wouldn't share any classes with them. It was decided that Denise and Amy would take the mornings, and Sharon and Aaron would take the evenings. Back in their room, Amy told Aaron it was lucky that they had such good bathroom buddies. For the last two years, she was stuck with selfish neighbors who would hog the bathroom regardless of when they had agreed to be scheduled for.
It was now getting to be dinner time, so Amy guided her to one of the cafes around campus. As they were leaving the room, Sharon and Denise were also leaving to eat and joined them for dinner. Aaron learned that Denise was from New York City and Sharon was from Savannah, Georgia. Both of Sharon's parents were mages, and Denise was the first in her family that she was aware of. Mage schools like this one searched for new mages. There were people that were trained to feel for wild magic. Denise had had a few close calls already before a mage hunter found her. She had explained to Denise what was happening to her and showed her magic as well. It took little convincing to get Denise on board to come to Riverbrook as a freshman and had been here ever since. Hey everyone, hope you loved the video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe for more awesome sci-fi content. You can also support us by hitting the thanks button at the bottom of the video. Your generosity goes a long way. Every bit helps us bring you more stories from the stars. Thanks a bunch.